ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are here. After 13 weeks, welcome to Loch Lomond. This stunning landscape is a creative mind's dream. The freshwater lock has inspired many a creative mind to come up with many awesome things. It is the line between the highlands and the lowlands and it was carved out by glaciers during the last ice age some 10 or 20,000 years ago. There are many islands on Loch Lomond and depending on the water levels, visibility can be a hit or a miss. Some of the larger islands on Loch Lomond are huge by British standards for fresh water and many of the islands are left over from the harder rock that withstood the passing of the glaciers. Many of the islands have a common theme with Loch Tay as they have Cranogs, the artificial islands left over from the prehistoric period. To tell you more I want to introduce James Fraser, one of the top guys at the Friends of Loch Lomond and the Trossachs. Welcome to Loch Lomond and the Trossachs and to the Friends of Loch Lomond and the Trossachs charity organisation responsible for helping to protect, promote and provide for this special part of Scotland. As you can see it's no accident it's Scotland's first national park from the stunning landscapes in front of you. But to tell you more about this inspiring place I want to hand you over to the park ranger. I'm a ranger for Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park and I've got one of the best jobs in the world. Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park is 720 square miles, it's a huge area. We are pretty much to the southerly end of it, it stretches to the west to the Argyll Forest, north beyond these mountains behind me right up to Tyndrum and in the east we've got the Trossachs. So we're standing on the Highland Boundary Fault Zone. North of here you have the Highlands, which are these massive mountains pushed up 400 million years ago. And this, this zone, it's like a line that runs across the whole of Scotland from Helensburgh and Arran right up to Stonehaven in the east. And south of here you've got the lowlands, where low-lying, rich soils, fertile land, and people live differently in both of these. So the Highlanders had hard lives in these glens and hills and the cold but they had good lives too. They had the shielings in the summer and the valleys in the winter. And your lowlanders had permanent places of residence, permanent farms, they would enrich it. And it's changed the whole of Scotland's culture. The rocks under our feet have dictated who we are and how we live. Whatever you're looking for, from a day out for a holiday or for an afternoon, you can find it here in the National Park. We've got spots where you could walk all day and never see another soul. We've got seaside and rock pools, we've got mountains and lower hill walks, we've got views like this that are a 10 minute walk from the car park just to get to here. So there's cycleways, there's paddling for the kids and there's towns and villages with shops and lovely cafes and pubs to hang out. There are 22 lochs and every day, whichever one you're at is your favourite. So today my favourite is Loch Lomond, but yesterday it was Loch Achry. And when it's sunny it's fantastic, when it's rainy it's even prettier because it's got that Dreek, Trossachs, Loch Lomond look. Um, and what a beautiful day it is too. Well, welcome ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages. After 13 weeks we are here. We are in the season finale of the Artist Heart Season 3 and we are in Loch Lomond. Welcome to you all. As always, I am your host, John Morris. Well folks, I hope you absolutely love seeing that beautiful cinematic photography there. It's incredible this place. The sun is just glaring down at the moment and it's just so beautiful and warm and just amazing. Anne Ellis is one of the sweetest Scottish ladies that the world has ever, ever been blessed with. She's one of the greatest speakers and one of the gentlest, kindest ladies that I've ever, ever had the privilege to know about. And right now, she is going to take you around and tell you in her own words her life in Scotland. Scotland is rich in culture and its rivers and glens, lochs and mountains make its scenery magnificent. A scenery that has inspired many of our wonderful artists. 
And here we are in Helensborough, my hometown, and also the hometown of John Logie Baird, the man who discovered television. So we're rich in engineering and scientific skills as well as artistic ones. And in 1903, a house was designed by one of Scotland's favourite sons and a well-known architect throughout the world. And let's go and have a look at it. And here we are, the Hill House, Charles Rennie Mackintosh's famous domestic masterpiece. It was designed in 1902 and finished in 1903, and it stands high above the hill in Helensborough, known throughout the world. Visitors come from all over to see this wonderful house, and you couldn't get a more glorious setting. And what's special about it? Well, I'll tell you, it's got a mixture of modern architecture that pleased the designers from Europe, and it's also got the Scottish vernacular. You can see the old castle forms, you can see the turrets. Macintosh waxed lyrical using the whole repertoire of forms and functions in this house. And from these wonderful interiors inside, which are a mixture of fairy tale and delicacy, you can see the views that the family enjoyed down onto the river where all this journey started. And that's where we're going now. Who'd have thought it? 150 feet off the ground, standing in the great Titan crane belonging to John Brown Shipyard, one of the biggest shipbuilding firms in the world. And this crane was so named because it was the strongest crane, because it had to lift the engines, the big diesel engines, for the great liners that sailed across the oceans. What an experience for the visitors. Not only are you get wonderful round-the-clock views here, but there's a museum that can tell you all about the history of shipyard and the history of shipbuilding in Scotland. This is what made the river great. It's all started round about here on this great river. And these shipyards didn't only produce ships, because they produced, as we all know, famous comedians and football managers. So we have a lot to thank them for. Here we are, a very stately progress up the testing tank at the Denny Ship Model Experimental Tank. And what we're doing is what was done from 1883, is we're testing the hull of any of these great vessels that were built on the Clyde. We've been up the Titan, we've seen where the ships were built, and this is where the hulls were tested. The great ships were all built down to scale on a model size and run up to test the resistance against the water. And that was what the whole point was. In an era when speed was everything, Denny's were the first to start testing their hulls this way. And here we are at Dumbarton Castle, perched high above us, 73 metres up in the air, on this great plug of basalt rock. It's been here since the Iron Age and was first written about by St. Patrick in the 5th century. For long times in the whole period of its existence, it's been the refuge of the famous kings and queens of Scotland. Mary Queen of Scots, she was held here as a wee child before she was sent over to marry the young Dauphin of France. There's been many battles fought around it. No fear of the cannonballs now. You can come and visit the castle, go up its 552 steps to the top, and from there you can see Ben Lomond. Ben Lomond National Memorial Park sits within the National Park and covers 20 square miles of mountain and forest here on the east side of Loch Lomond. It was designated in 1996 in memory of those who gave their lives in the World Wars and the sculpture behind me acts as a focal point for the whole memorial park. But it's the landscape that is the memorial and it's a landscape that people have been moving about in for for a long time, thousands of years, on the National Trust for Scotland ground at Ben Lomond, we've found various signs of um, some of those activities uh, people have been getting up to from iron smelting. Uh, this is the, the waste from the bloomery slag. Uh, this was taking place sometime in the, the 1400s to 1600s. Even older is the flint arrowhead here in my uh, left hand, which was found on the beach of Rowerden and Youth Hostel behind us here. We know this dates from 4,000 years ago, Perhaps it was a hunter that dropped it, perhaps it's from a, a burial that took place somewhere here. These are physical signs 
of the long extent of human activity in this area. And you can get a great uh, glimpse into the, um, the story of people on the east side of Loch Lomond uh, if you visit the Ardes Hidden History Trail from the National Trust for Scotland's Ranger Base just 700 metres north of the car park where you'll find signs of the house sites, farming, the iron smelting and other activities that people were getting up to in this landscape uh, over the centuries. Throughout history, the scenery and the magnificent landscape around Loch Lomond and this beautiful River Clyde has attracted artists from the Glasgow Boys and McCulloch and Knox right through to today. So all of this has created an area that artists and craftspeople have enjoyed and it's been a source of their creativity. And speaking of creativity, it's now time for me to share with you one of my most favourite paintings ever created, and one that was inspired during our time travelling around Scotland. It is the wonderful, beautiful White Stallion, and a painting in which, coincidentally, now hangs in Carlisle. Falls in the night as the stars quietly shine, giving out their own to the host of his own I'll be watching you, there I can still feel your heartbeat, and in this time I can feel your need for me. From the shadows I'll be, I'll be watching In the shadows I'll be waiting Protecting you wherever you go In the darkness Should you ever need me Just call out and I'll be right there I'm watching it So now you are ready to fly away And trying to make it on your own In your own special way No matter where you are or where you go Anytime you're feeling scared Think of me and I'll be there from the shadows I'll be watching In the shadows I'll be waiting Protecting you wherever you go In the darkness Should you ever need me Just come out and I'll be right there Watching and waiting, your guardian angel. When you're afraid, I'll be there. In the darkness, should you ever need me, just go out and I'll be right there. I'm watching it.
folks, that's it. We really hope you enjoyed the season finale of the Artist Heart Series 3, Kilts, Castles and Haggis. Do make sure that you stay tuned for future releases. And we have got a special interview where I sit down and we do a one-on-one -on -one session about my memories all these years later. It is so exciting to have been a part of this and to share this amazing story with you about Scotland and to bring to you one of the most amazing places in the world. What better way to leave this beautiful, beautiful place that we call Loch Lomond than showing you some of the optics, the funnies and the best bits of the Artist Heart Series 3, all surrounded by an amazing song. And how apt it is that we are on the bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond.
don't know, Edinburgh Castle is actually sitting upon an extinct volcano. And behind me, what you can see is the plug from that volcano. Okay. Mainly. Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of The Artist Heart, brought to you live from the beautiful land of Denure. As you can see behind me, Denure Castle, Ailes of Craig, and Aaron is over away in the distance. Aaron's always seems to be in these films that we put together. But it's just wonderful to be here. It's amazing to see the beaches around this time as well. It's just a lovely landscape. I'm making a balls of this. <laughs> and welcome to this week's episode of The Artist Heart, live here from Denure. It's just about sunset, as you can see behind me, beautiful Denure Castle, the ruins that still stand to this day. Over in the far distance we've got Ailes of Craig, which is actually one of the, what we call a plug from a extinctive volcano. <laughs> Kellington's, right, I won't remember all that. Just give me dummy cards. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right, anyway, we're recording. Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of The Artist Heart. Brought from... Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of The Artist Heart. Brought to you live from the beautiful land of Denure. Sun is just setting behind me, and as you can see, Denure ruins and the wonderful castle that still stands to this day. Over in the distance, we've got Ailes of Craig from an erupt volcano in Edinburgh. Folks, I have been your host, John Morris. This has been the Artist Heart Series 3, Kilts, Castles, Haggis. And it has been my pleasure to bring this wonderful place to you, and we hope that you thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. Don't forget to see, head to johnmorrisartfromtheheart.com forward slash documentaries to, to learn more about the work that we do, the stories that are behind the series, the stories that's behind the different episodes and the places that we travel to. And if you want to learn more about teaching, learning how to paint online and so much more, head to outreachart.org now. Until next time, take care. God bless. And I'm back. Take care.